zombies. Good boys, it's RT60. I hope you're having a great day and that you didn't break your leg. A lot of people are breaking their legs recently. It's a real problem. I have a small, slight, tiny bit obsession where there's like a point where once a year for an entire month, I just do crack. Uh, uh, binges of watching bad movies. Cut that out. But this whole trend and obsession started back like three years ago when I joined a random Discord call with some friends and they were watching this movie. And after watching it all with them, I gotta say, Headshot. This is possibly the most American movie I've ever seen in my life. Before we get into the video, right, you gotta do one thing that I say every video to everyone that comes here to do. I need you to enjoy the video. Do that shit. That's all I need. Anyways, bro, let's get cozy and comfortable while I explain the story of, of this incredible movie. So do y'all remember Osama Bin Laden? If you somehow don't know who he is, which would kind of scare me because he only died in like 2011. He founded Al Qaeda and he was an extremist. He was a fucked up guy. Well, as I said already, he died in 2011. And a bunch of people in America were fucking partying because of it. This man was the most wanted man in the entire world for years. And it was around this time period where we were feeling very patriotic as a country that a certain director came up with a video idea and started shooting. And in 2012, the masterpiece landed fully crafted and edited for people to watch Osambi. It looks like Osama needs to die twice. And you know you have a good movie on your hands when you DM the director about it and they leave you on red. Hello, is this a director John Line? Hello, yes it is. Nice to meet you. I'm a YouTuber named RT60. I wanted to know if you had any direct involvement with the movie Osambi. Maybe he just didn't want to talk to me because I said I was a YouTuber. You know, maybe I, I think I fumbled that. But, you know, I go to his Instagram, scroll down a bit. You see it right there. He's a the man responsible. And I'm just in love with how this movie starts. You get all the plot you need in the span of four minutes. The movie starts off with a reenactment of Osama's assassination. These boys bust in with their airsoft guns, right? And then, oh, God damn it. Headshot, headshot them. Hey, bro, please pick me up. I got ray guns. And after we see Bin Laden inject himself with some sort of mysterious liquid, our boys in blue bust in and one-tap him. Bag him and tag him. Get the hell out of here. Forgot him for country. Geronimo. 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 Holy shit. I just shot the guy. Wait until my wife hears this. I'm gonna get the best head tonight. But when the boys are bringing Bin Laden's body back, um... Bravo, what's going on? So okay. Shit hits the fan quick. What's going on back there? Stand down! Stand down, soldier! Ah! Hold your fire! Hold your fire! The helicopter actually goes down and Bin Laden's body falls out of the sky like a fucking sarcophagus. And then we see two random people getting hot and heavy on the beach. Mm. Hey, let's go swimming. <laughs> she fucking died! Anna. Anna! <laughs> Why is Big Titty Thompson over here shouting like they're playing Marco Polo? Anna! This is giving me heavy rain vibes. Jason! Jason! Oh shit, it's Hannah. Oh shit, it's Hannah. The zombie's back, baby. And now there's a literal zombie apocalypse breakout in the middle of Afghanistan. But the military ain't gonna give up, okay? Osama is still out there. He's gonna turn the whole world into zombies. I can't wait till we get to the part where he says, it's Osambian in time, and then Osambi's all over the place. So the military has to send in a few people to try and fix the issue. It's about time that you meet our ragtag group of heroes. First of all, we got Chip. This guy, aside from being patriotic as fuck and just in general a hero, his character is pretty much in the embodiment of this meme. It's like this dude has a beef with t-shirts, bro. He, he will not wear one, even while fighting deadly zombies, getting shot at. This man does not need clothes. Next up, we got Joker. He's like the Party City version of Keanu Reeves, but he's called Joker because that is the one thing that he's good at. Why aren't there any Walmarts in Afghanistan? Why? Because there's targets on every corner. <laughs> This man is a hoot. Next up, we got Chapo. Chapo is different out here, and can you guess why his name's Chapo? Enjoy your unlimited virgins, mis amigos! What? I don't mean you, tomboy. You're goddamn right, he's Mexican. Cheese and rice. A gosh darn freedom fighter. We got DC. I don't know much about this dude. I'm talking about. <laughs> Are you serious? What? It's hot out. 
It could be snowing and you'd be hot. That's a terrible pickup line, but yes, I will go out with you. The gay tension between Chip and DC is so goddamn hot. These two are definitely going together in my O-Zombie fan. And then there's Tomboy. She's this pretty blonde girl who kicks ass. She also has a sword. Don't ask me why. You are in the middle of a war-torn Afghanistan, not a goddamn ninja movie. And then you got all the other guys in the squad, which, spoiler alert, they don't matter because they all die. Killing infected civilians, it makes me sick. You can't kill something that's already dead. Even if I get infected, consider me a goner. And kill the zombie that took my post. I love how easily they're just killing zombies out here. Just right next to each other's ears, no earplugs. And the effects when they pop those heads, bro. It's like a satisfying headshot in Valorant, bro. Just Sexual harassment, you're banned. Damn. Kick the fuck out that kid. I say we proceed as planned. Any bites, scratches, blood intake, etc. I guess you only live once, right? Tell Satan I love him. Rottweiler. Hell, carpe diem. Semper Fi and all that other crap. Sorry, Hank. Yeah. Why give these characters such long and emotional monologues before they die? We don't we don't know these people. <laughs> like this is the beginning of the movie. We just learn their names and they're already like, I think I'll pass soon. <laughs> you only live once, right? Oh, uh, that's what they all say. And after a little bit of zombie beatdown and people just dying out, we get to meet our next main character that I actually didn't mention. Here you are, thief. This is Dusty Miller, or as I like to call her, Dusty Melon. She's a yoga instructor from Colorado that somehow just waltzed into <laughs> Afghanistan to find her crazy brother, Derek. I'm not just saying that, by the way. That's how they refer to him in the movie bio. Crazy, wacky brother, Derek. And she's on the lookout for him because she thinks that he might be here looking for the Osambi. She's just chilling here, you know, with her friend Asif, just eating and drinking by the fire late at night until they start hearing some rustling and some, some fucky wucky noise. She pulls out some kind of revolver while Asif just walks over there like, like a fucking chat. And he's just like, bro, there is nothing over here. Nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man, my friend's been hurt. You see this? Oh, oh. oh my God, you're... Oh. <laughs> This is why you don't spray and pray, bro. This girl got hit aim labs, bro. What the hell was that? She did shoot Chip, but thankfully he was wearing his Kevlar, so he's he's all right. I said drop your weapon. Not make me kill because I will not get past one. So yeah, basically the crew picks up Dusty Melons and she explains to them why she's there and who she's looking for. She thinks her freedom fighter brother Derek is somewhere in the middle of to kill Osama himself. You should be dead. Who are you? What are you doing out here? You take a wrong turn at the trailhead in India. My name is Dusty Miller. Please meet you in one piece. If you so much as get a scratch from one of these things, you're dead. Might not be a bad idea if I check you out. What? Scratches and bites. For safety and ours. I'm trying to find my brother, Derek Miller. And he is? Or was? He is trying to end the war on terror. Let me guess. Business went up in flames back home, blamed it on the war, decided to solve the world's problems all on his own. Probably bought a couple of cheap weapons. Maybe a sword. And tried to grow a beard. You know to fit in. Probably still thinks Bin Laden's alive. All right, listen up. Because we'll have our house guest here. Let's solidify the perimeter and hold up for the night. I love how she just, she's just stands up there, like all annoyed. These people who just saved my life are really shit talking my brother. What the fuck? Last time I come to Pakistan, this fucking neighborhood. <laughs> There are so many shots in here that just look like a commercial. You need to start your morning off right. Pick yourself up an Uncle Grant's <laughs> breakfast bowl <laughs> to solve all your morning problems. And holy shit, we see him. It's our crazy brother Derek, boys. And we get to follow him along his journey as he treks through the world. His first task is taking this bag off of the zombie. Easy. 
crazy clap. And then the crew splits up to cover more ground. And then we see one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Nothing. <laughs> Getting a little soft. <laughs> it's not what your mom said. My mom's dead, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. She lives in Toledo. Suck it. I'm telling you, DC and Chip, they are fucking, they are some homo homies. Look at these big, beautiful men bumping to each other like they're about to bump uglies. It is what it is. It is what it is. And now I'm just gonna describe what happens next to you because this is possibly the most low budget way you could explain the plot of your movie. For almost five minutes, the main characters are walking through this dry riverbed as they explain why they're in Afghanistan and the entire plot of the movie. And the only thing that's there to keep it interesting is, is Chapo's witty one-liners. Yeah, this is getting better and better. Well, at least you're not dragging around a civilian chick with a mullet looking for her retarded brother. And every once in a while, tomboy just shooting a random zombie. Snows yet. It's temporarily contaminated. Bruh. It feels like they had the meet a quota of like a zombie death per like minute. So just to remind you that you're watching a zombie movie. Well, let's put in tomboy one tap and some zombies real quick. Sin, Sin City was in Bavia. We get back to Derek as he finds a map and he's searching throughout the lands to find the main base and he comes across a lost and hurt child. Shouldn't you be in school or something? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was me. He did not shoot the child. He actually gave him water and later he talks with him over a fire. And this is why Derek is probably my favorite character. He's just the nicest out of the whole movie. Everyone else here, you could see that they all have like assholeish traits or just have really bad one-liners. While Derek is just crazy, but he's endearing, you know? He's he, he's got he's got a kind heart and helps him find his family again. Fucking W Derek, bro. Thanks from both sides. How many? 50 plus. 50. I say we can't swap before they reach Joker and Tomboy in the rear. There's Chapo on DC. Chapo's holding the front. DC's in the tree line with Big Mama. Carol! Bro, that's not how an op works. Instead of using the scope on it, he decides to fire the fucking sniper rifle like a rocket launcher. And it fucking works? What kind of aim? This motherfucker's gotta be hacking. What the hell is that shot? Oh, crap, it's a convention. Are you gonna shoot him? I think she wants him to die. She took so long to shoot the zombies, the other guy that was getting mauled by them got up and shot them before she did. You guys cover me. I'll get both. That's suicide, Doc. I'm already dead. Doc got... Bit. And I didn't explain much about Doc before this, but he's been an integral part to the team. A true American hero. I'll get the guns. Wait. That's for getting bit. I was supposed to have your babies. What the? Fuck? He's like, bitch, you couldn't have told me this before I got bit by a zombie? What was wrong with you? She does not show romantic interest in this man at all during this movie. All of a sudden, I was supposed to have your babies. And he just has no words after that. He leaves, he has to abandon his tomboy. That's probably the coolest effect they use in the entire movie. 20 meters! Guys? Shoot it!
I'm now instating a new rule. All good movies, whenever some character's love interest dies, that character needs to have a fucking samurai sword trading montage. I want to find the soul comedic if they didn't use this inspiring, beautiful music. Like, this is supposed to be 100% serious. You know, I feel like this goes hard as like a music video. Do you like my sword, 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 my diamond sword, sword? You cannot afford, afford, afford my diamond sword, sword. So yeah, Tomboy lost her only love and she let it out in the way of the sword. It's a beautiful moment and probably the best scene in the entire movie. The gang of Joker, Chapo, and Tomboy then travel the land looking for something. And meanwhile, Chip, DC, and Dusty are exploring the area as they come across a random body that they decide to check. They see a wire strapped inside this guy's vest and- Looks like an IED. I doubt it was Hannibal the Cannibal here though. What's the point? Whatever it is, we fell for it. Slowly step away, retrace your steps. Yeah, real slow. All of a sudden, they realize that they were trapped. Incoming! Move, move, move! Trash ass aim. Everyone in this goddamn has trash aim besides that guy with the sniper rifle. Some shrapnel from the explosion flew into DC's side and now he's bleeding out. Back with our other side of the crew, they're walking through a weird stretch of land when they notice wires throughout the ground. Wired bombs everywhere as zombies start circling them and encroaching them. And they gotta fight for their lives, baby. Party's still in full swing. Where are these guys coming from? I'm open for suggestions, Joker! But things are not looking good, man. Things are they're closing in, nothing's going right. Oh shit. Derek pulls up and the whip hops out and guns everybody down. That was awesome! Whoa! Watch where you're pointing that thing! Who the hell are you? Derek Miller, you could have gotten yourself and us killed. But you wouldn't be complaining if I didn't show up when I did. The man's got a point. Your sister's with the rest of our unit. My sister? She's here? Looking for you. <laughs> I didn't think she'd come. Apparently, stupidity runs in the family. Chapo, you're right, but like, stop talking. Do you ever have a friend group or know of a friend group where everyone's pretty chill, everyone's pretty cool, goes about their day, right? But there's that one guy, that one dude who's a part of the group that's just always starting shit and just in general not pleasant to be around. Chapo is that guy of this movie. Transition to our other team with Dusty as DC is bleeding out while people are encroaching on them. So Chip does his Chip thing and takes his fucking shirt off. And they are absolutely fighting for DC's life. They start to get desperate, okay? They try to look for any possible place they can get some healing, maybe a med kit down somewhere. So they head down into this cave and find. I think you're right. Let's get out of here. Oh, nice. Death and horrors. Good find. You're telling me our boy Doc got bitten even though the whole time he was shooting zombies from a distance? But Chip is literally surrounded by them multiple times without a shirt and he's fine. Plot armor is a hell of a drug. Bring Doc back. Bring him back to life. He didn't deserve to die. As I can't find any healing, DC gives one last look and word to his best friend. Stay with me, man. Stay with me. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They do not put a fucking samurai montage after that. And then we get the family meetup, baby. Derek? Derek? I can't believe you're here. Derek? Woo! <sighs> no, you're so stupid. Two hours later. Are you okay? The next day, Derek goes at it on his own again, and he actually somehow finds a base with a bunch of actual humans in it. Hey, what? Hey, Pinta. Oh, oh yeah, Derek got the hand. So not only does Derek have the biggest heart and the craziest out of all of them, he also can fight and has actual good aim. 
Thank you, Call of Duty. Throughout all this madness, the crew starts to catch up and listen to where Derek went. He quietly sneaks back into a cave in the back lines of the base, and unknowingly, Dusty and Chip follow him after. When they meet up deep inside, they start to hear voices on the other side of the wall. I've called an airstrike. We have to leave now. This is the end of the cave as far as I can tell. This is the last room. And... Atadna lan yatarakun lakum. Aks. And while Osambi and his crew are doing a commentary video, they bust in when they least expect it. It's time to throw down, baby. The zombies bust in and kill the humans because somehow the humans did not think that that would happen. Meanwhile, on the outside, things are looking kind of dicey as it's only three of them. And once Tomboy dodges, Joker gets a fat shot to the neck. So, so there's a murderer, right? He's sitting in an electric chair. He's gonna have to be executed. Oh. And your last request, ask the chaplain. Uh, Jerry says the murder. Will you hold my hand? That was the worst joke I've ever heard. <laughs> They're all bad. You got that right. Who said that? Who? who what? What fucking asshole said that? Some ghost just appeared in my room and said that. Sorry, yo. And the funniest person in the entire movie slowly starts to phase out. And now it's time for the final event. Derek is absolutely surrounded by zombies, but he sprays them all down thanks to his two AKs. And once they're all dead, he realizes that he has one left to deal with. Derek's entire purpose, his one reason for coming here, and the only thing that he's cared about this entire time. He found him, and with the help of an RPG... Go back to hell, you son of a... Finally, the US government air support starts to show up and bomb everything in that area, killing off any zombies that were bunched up there. And now, because of Derek's heroic sacrifice, they get to head back home with their mission complete. But wait a minute, why are we so far back? Oh, no way. Guys, we got a straggler. Shoot it, I'm too tired. You have got to be kidding me. Derek? 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 The plot armor is crazy. Derek, with a fat smile on his face, is like, bruh, I did it. I killed him. It was me. It's over. I got him. Brother gets blown up, falls on the floor from pain, just beat the fuck out of him. And thankfully, he gets to go back home with his sister, with his life mission complete. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Osambi. This movie was nominated for one sound award, and it was never spoken of again. My rating on it is a 3 out of 10. I also need to make it clear really quick, because I forgot to really do this in the video. I don't hate this movie at all, I really love it. I actually feel like we should encourage more films like this, and filmmakers to actually make a film, no matter how goofy the concept, or how seriously they take it, or how low the budget it is if you want to make a movie you make that movie and then you do better the next time you make a movie as mahatma gandhi once said you can't have success without failure bruh gandhi 1825 but no i hope this might inspire you guys to go out and find a few low budget hilarious zombie movies of your own anyway yeah i got a discord twitter and twitch all linked in the link tree in the description anyways i'm gonna see y'all later peace peace like and subscribe like and subscribe if you like rt60 you should like and subscribe like and subscribe like and subscribe if you like rt60 you should like and subscribe okay.